Hi, my name is Fee Sherman and I'm an audio engineer. And I thought what I would talk about today is the job of audio engineering and kind of what you do, where you work. Yeah, yeah. Audio engineers work in a variety of fields like television, including the shows and the ads, radio, which is obviously very audio based and movies, you know, they have sound. As I am a musician myself, I'm going to be speaking about audio engineering specifically in regards to studios and music. And as home studios and home recording has become more and more prevalent, I find it comes up more and more in conversations. And a lot of my friends have no idea what I'm talking about when I use words like mixing, tracking, a DAW, which isn't even a word. And I thought maybe I could outline for those of you who don't know what recording is and what goes into it, what these terms mean and show you some examples. So very, very basic is what's called a digital audio workstation or a DAW. A DAW is a program used by engineers to record and edit audio. And there are many different kinds of DAWs, including Logic, Ableton, Acid, and what I'm going to be showing you today, Pro Tools, which is pretty much the industry standard when it comes to music. So let's jump right in and I'll show you what one of these look like. So here you can see what's called a track. A track contains a file of audio that's either being recorded or has been recorded already. In this case, the track is recording my voice or what's also referred to as tracking my voice. In many cases, especially when recording a song, multiple tracks are recorded with different instruments on each track. Here you can see that there is more than one track with different kinds of audio on each one. This one contains guitar, this one drums, this one bass, vocals, and so on. The purpose of having many tracks and having each instrument on its own track is so that you can manipulate each individual instrument and get it to sound its best on its own. You then can combine all of these different tracks together to form the best sounding song. Additionally, tracks don't even have to be recorded at the same time. They can be recorded in different rooms, different buildings, and different days. When recording or tracking different instruments, the player will wear one of these, a headset, obviously, at least, you know, you probably know what this is. And in it will be what's called a click track or a metronome. The click track will obviously help the player stay on beat and will also enable the audio engineer to synchronize his track with the rest of the other tracks and make the song play together. Now, once all the pieces are recorded, the next step is to make them into one cohesive song, which brings us to the next part of this video, mixing. Before going into the process of mixing, I just want to describe what mixing does first and then We'll see how we do it. Mixing basically enables you to take the different tracks that were recorded separately at different times in different places and make them sound coherent together as if they were all played at the same time. For example, if you recorded the guitar in a closet, let's say, the space for the guitar to reverberate is going to be considerably smaller than, let's say, the drums, which you've recorded in a concert hall. Anyone listening to these two tracks played concurrently would be able to hear the disparity between the two of them and it would ruin the harmony of the song. However, even if every instrument was recorded in the same room with the same space, their frequencies might overlap and therefore muffling each other. So without getting too complicated, frequencies are basically the measurement of how audio reverberates through the air. Much like other forms of measurement, there's a frequency range and different sounds occupy different regions on the spectrum. I think a visual aid would help. Here, I have pulled up an EQ or an equalizer that allows me to manipulate different frequencies within the sound spectrum. Frequency is expressed in a measurement called Hertz. And just dealing with the human ear, ranges from about 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. We can't really hear below 20 hertz, so let me give you an outline of what goes on in each range of the spectrum. Here we have 32 hertz to about 64 hertz, which is what's known as the low end. Mainly the kick drum and the bass occupy this region. The next region is the low to mid range, about 125 hertz to 250 hertz. In this region, there's the low end of most bass instruments, including guitar, cello, and piano. The mid range, which is 250 to about 500 hertz, includes deep vocals like Barry White and the meat of most bass instruments. The next is the mid to high range, which is one kilohertz or a thousand hertz to two kilohertz. Most standard vocals are affected by this range and the resonance of the human voice is most pronounced here. Next, we have what's known as the high end, which is about four kilohertz to eight kilohertz. This is a sweet spot for the melodic components of music, including your whirling guitar solos and your fancy piano runs. High or sharp crashes and bangs, such as cymbals and things that screech, will be most affected in this range. And then we have the top frequency of what the human ear can hear, and that's 16 kilohertz. This is known as the fidelity range, where adjustments can affect the overall clarity of sounds, but if you boost this region too much, it may bring out white noise, or that hiss sound, which we're all familiar with from cassette tapes. Since many instruments occupy the same space on the frequency spectrum, they can overlap each other and make the other ones sound muffled. And inaudible. And instead of being able to say, oh, hey, that's the guitar, or there's the piano, it's more like in kindergarten when everyone screams out at the same time and you can't tell who's talking. So again, keeping it simple, if I feel that the bass is too heavy, say, in the 400 hertz range, and that because of it, the guitar is no longer cutting through the mix, 
I'll make a cut at the 400 Hz range on the bass, thus reducing the volume of that frequency. But remember, since we recorded all the tracks separately, this won't affect the guitar at all, thus allowing the guitar to now shine through. That just about covers the basics of mixing and the terminology, including DAW, mixing, and tracking. Well, I hope you've learned something, and again, I'm Svi. You can check out my music in the description below, and have a great day.